Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the Productivity 1000 series PLC drum sequencer instructions. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at the drum instruction. And do you remember those uh, mechanic, mechanics of a music box? And if you look, it's got a drum with little uh, pegs that catch and flick the chimes in a particular sequence to play whatever tune is on the drum. So in the PLC, we basically have this drum driven event or which is from a limit switch or a button or by time itself. So here on my screen here, I'm actually connected to my uh, uh, Proactivity 1000 and here's the instruction for the drum. And if I look at the actual instruction itself, you'll see here that I have um, my uh, structure, which I'm using as drum. Then we have the time base unit that I can select, which in my case here, I'm going to use milliseconds. Then I have my tag name mapping, but because I'm using the drum, we just have the outputs. So we have 16 discrete uh, on-off bits that we can choose from. Then we have our drum table. And in our particular case, our drum table has 45 different steps. And basically all it is is a, uh, a way of turning the steps on and off by using the check mark. Check it on or check it off. And you can set each individual um, bit of these outputs on your output map here. Then for the duration, um, we have the time base, which um, is the uh, time unit as up here in milliseconds. So we have 200 milliseconds set for each one of these. The condition we currently have is set for duration. However, you'll also see event. So if we just want an event, then we would specify the event here, which would be a, um, a Boolean equation or resp respond to a Boolean equation either on or off. And then we can check for tags or look for different events like a limit switch, like we said before, or push button, um, in order to advance. The other thing we could do is say D and D, so duration and event have to happen, or we can say D or E, so either the time expires or the event happens, and then you move on to the next step. So different different uh, areas altogether. In our particular case, what we're going to do is develop a sequence, as you can see here, the first step, second step, and it puts a one in the bottom here, and then the next one starts, and then it puts two in the bottom, and then and so on until it fills it right up on step 37. And then what we do is just kind of uh, make a pattern to release it and go back down to zero again. And then once we reset the, uh, the drum, it goes all the way back to the top again. So basically we're keeping a sequence of lights that should be flashing or will be flashing on the uh, PLC itself. So that's the actual instruction. The, the inputs to that instruction, we have an enable, which we're using switch number one for. Then we have switch number two, which is the jog, so you can jog through your drum. And then we have switch number three, which will do the reset um, of your drum instruction. Or we have the drum done bit, and that's from our structure. We reset that, so this sequence of events will continuously replay. Then if we look at the actual outputs, we take our drum output one, through eight and we're turning on our output um, relays we have eight different relays that we will be turning on now looking at the plc we are connected through our ethernet port which is located right here and the outputs that we are selecting right now for this drum is are these eight, eight outputs connected right here so the next thing to do we are online and we are monitoring so the switch number one will start our drum. So we turn that on. And what you'll see is that our we can monitor the sequence of operation right here. We can also look at our actual outputs and monitor it. And you can see the pattern that we selected within the bits of that drum. And they're executing right now. We could also go to our, our uh, 
data view and call up our data view and we can see the pattern of the drum, our drum step number and our drum step time indicated right here. So several different ways of monitoring this drum and seeing how it actually is functioning. Close that down. And that will continuously go on and on forever. So if we were to uh, turn that off, we can hit three for a reset. Reset base takes it back to the very first step of our drum. Turn that back off again. Now the next uh, instruction is our sequencer. Now the sequencer are very similar to drums, but the sequencer output can have up to 16 Boolean integer or numeric tags per step. So your drum instruction outputs are limited to the same 16 Boolean bits. Each step in the sequ sequencer can be defined by time and or event and or specific outputs can be set going in and out of the step. So let's take a look at our sequencer and we will double click on it and what you will see is that we have uh, again something similar to our, our drum we have our time unit set here we're using a structure called sequencer which sets up our current step our current cycle time our elapsed time in our step and our done bit we also have our initial step that we can um, put in to say this is our start step then we have the number of steps that we want then on each of these tables, we have our step numbers down here, and then we have our outputs, our duration, condition, event, and our disable step that we can disable if we wish not to run that particular step. And then we have a comment that we can comment each individual step with a certain uh, uh, structure so we can say what, what exactly is going on. So if we look at the actual inputs here, or the outputs, you'll see where it says show. And you see here we got dur we have duration up to 200 or 200 milliseconds here, and then we have 2,000 for two seconds on this one. And so we'll, let's look at the last one here. Well, let's just show. We'll hit show. And in there, what you see is now here's where my output values are stored. So I can have up to 16 different output tags located here. In my particular case, I've created a tag called sequence bit output, and it actually is going to, once you go into the step or start the value, it will be uh, 65,535, which uh, turns all the bits on within that 16 bits of my uh, output. And then the end value will be the same. So again, within each individual step, we can, can determine what values are going in and out. So we'll hit OK. Then um, our condition of the event so again, we can select duration, event, uh, duration and event, or uh, duration or event. So the time expires or the event happens. And then we actually plus specify our event here. And as mentioned before, we can disable a step or we can comment that step. So in our particular case, what we're gonna do is create a pattern um, like the uh, movie Knight Rider and had a car in there called Kit and the light just went from one um, spot down back to the other and then bounced back again. So it's an oscillating um, light going back and forth. So we'll recreate that but we'll put a little twist as well. Um, when I have input number 8 on what will happen is the um, data We'll uh, switch to another sequence, which will turn all the bits on and then all the bits off. So in our case here, we have switch number four is my enable. And then we have switch five, which is jog. Switch six is my reset. And then on my sequencer, if I do not have switch number eight and my sequencer is less than 30, remember I have 32 steps, then I reset it. So that's my basically my Knight Rider light sequencer that will go from uh, bit uh, one 
down to bit 16 and then go back again to bit number 1. Then if switch 8 is on and the sequencer is equal to 1, what we do is we actually move the value 31 into the sequencer step number. So in other words, when sequencer or switch 8 is on, we then, then select the switch or the sequencer to go to step 31 and then continue from there. So again, what we're doing is we have a sequencer, but we actually have two sequencers within the one instruction. So in an actual application, what we would do is have uh, parts of a program that would fire if certain conditions are met and we can do totally different sequence uh, of events. Very powerful in um, simplifying your program and a documentation would be very easy to do. Then we have a unpack so what we do is all the time we are unpacking um, this uh, output. So we take our sequencer output, which are the 16, and we unpack it and we put it into our output uh, channel. In this case here, we're going to be using the one here on our output card. So there's my 16 bits that we're uh, currently going to be uh, programming. So we're online and we're ready to go. If uh, what we'll do is for quickly transfer to runtime transfer, just to make sure everything is uh, the same in our PLC as it is in the um, uh, program here, which it is. And the first thing we'll do is that too. And so switch number four, we'll start our sequencer up. We'll turn that on and our sequencer 4 starts and now you can see our lights back and forth you can notice that here in our outputs cycling back and forth we can see this in our sequencer at our lapse time we can also monitor this through our datum view again and go to sequencer and we can see this is our 16 bits represented by our sequencer bit output. So we are oscillating back and forth just like the Knight Rider on Kit. So if we turn, uh, just look at this and what we do is we want to see what happens when we hit switch number 8. So it should finish the sequence and then turn them all off for two seconds, on for two seconds, which is exactly what's happening. So you see we jog, we, we toggle between uh, 30, 31, 32. Then our switch number six resets and it reset to our initial one. So you see our reset overrides our input. So we'll turn our enable off. Turn off our reset. And then what we can do is we can hit jog, which is five. And what you'll notice is jog will actually jog the step one at a time. So we can see the sequence of the lights. All the way down to 16, that goes back up the other. If we want to jog when 8 is on, we will continue jogging to the end. Then what happens is it should then turn all off and then all on. All off, all on. So our jog switch works for both the sequences that we programmed within our sequencer. Now all the uh, links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And a third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.